right, Rob Dew here with the fourth hour of Overdrive here at Infowars.com forward slash show. If you're listening to this on the radio and you'd like to watch what's going on, so we're about to throw to a pretty a fantastic video that Alex produced over the weekend talking about a story that is getting zero coverage in the mainstream media here in the United States. They'd rather spoon feed you issues about what Donald Trump said or who you might have touched or who you might have kissed, but not about the upcoming World War III that looks like it's impending at this point. I want to go to a couple articles before we go to this amazing video that Alex produced over the weekend. Look, I shot two videos with Alex on Friday and I thought he was kind of done. He came back on Saturday and shot more and then back on Sunday and shot even more. The man is working like a real man. I'm not going to say like a demon. That's how Hillary works. Here we go from Paul Joseph Watson, Kremlin insider. War might even uh, begin even before U.S. elections. Urges uh, citizens to stockpile cans of food. And this is uh, Sergei Markov. He's a member of the Civic Chamber, a Moscow-based institution. Said he's buying 200 cans of pork to be ready for a potential crisis. Right there. We had some canned bacon here the other day. It was kind of, not didn't taste like the bacon that I eat, but you know what? If you're in a situation where you're stuck underground for a few weeks while the nuclear fallout is uh, is overhead, you're going to eat anything you can. And it, you have to ask yourself at this point, too, are you stockpiled? Do you have storable food? Do you have water filters? Do you have uh, I, uh, potassium iodine to take care of radiation in your thyroid gland? you got to think about all these things, especially now. Here, here's from the Daily Mail. Turkey warns that World War III is inevitable if the Syrian conflict continues because Americans and Russia... America and Russia will come to a point of war. Well, what do we discuss over the weekend? That Joe Biden's come out and said we're going to be launching cyber attacks against Russia. Everybody's talking about how Russia has, Russia's the one who has hacked uh, the uh, accounts of John Podesta and put that information out to WikiLeaks. And uh, we've got a Wayne Matson article. And I'm not even going to get into this because he's going to be interviewed tonight by Liam McAdoo for the Nightly News. Report, UFO hunters, not Russians, hack Podesta. And we had a, a prominent UFO uh, hunter ended up dead over the weekend in Poland. And he said investigated if something happens and he put out some cryptic messages before he died. So is it possible? Podesta came out and started talking about his uh, interest in UFOs. Maybe he was being hacked by these people and then they turned over what they had to WikiLeaks. I've actually got a couple of recent leaks here that I'm going to read after this video, so stay tuned for that. But let's go to this video now from Alex Jones talking about the big story in the world that they're talking about everywhere but the United States. They want you concerned about Donald Trump's orange hair and who he might have kissed. Here's that report. The information that I'm about to relay to you is the most grave that I've ever reported in my 21 years on air. It is so Armageddon in nature that I find it hard to believe this is actually happening in the year 2016. The United States, hijacked by globalist forces, has openly in the last week declared de facto war against Russia. Why haven't we sent a message yet to Putin? We're sending a message. The United States military will stop you and we will beat you harder than you've ever been beaten before. Russia's hacked into a lot of things. China's hacked into a lot of things. Russia even hacked into the Democratic National Committee. We will be ready with serious political, economic, and military responses. The message he'll know said it. that he'll know it. And it'll be at the time of our choosing and under the circumstances that have the greatest impact. Right now, Senator, for us to control all of the airspace in Syria would require us to go to war against Syria and Russia. I think it would be great if we got along with Russia because we could fight ISIS together as an example. We could slide into nuclear war very quickly from her declared policy in Syria. So I won't sleep well at night if Donald Trump is elected, but I sure won't sleep well at night if Hillary Clinton is elected. Future high-end war between nation states and great powers, very highly lethal, unlike anything our army has experienced, at least since World War II. So a message is going to be sent. Will the public know it? I hope not. We're going to get to the de facto declaration of war 
and the preparations for physical war. And what the head of the Army says will have as high a casualty level as World War II in a moment. But first, the background that's undisputed. Russia only has two military bases outside of its country. It's not expansionist. It's fighting radical Islam around the world and should be an ally of the United States. And many of our top generals and admirals and others have been on record saying that fact. The threat is radical Islam and China, not Russia. I think it would be great if we get along with Russia because we could fight ISIS together as an example. The reason the globalists are so upset at Trump is they know he's being advised by the former head of defense intelligence, General Flynn, who exposed the fact that Obama and Hillary were expanding ISIS and Al-Qaeda worldwide three years ago. You are basically saying that even in government at the time, you knew those groups were around, you saw this analysis, sure. and you were arguing against it. But who wasn't listening? I think the, I think the administration. So the administration turned a blind eye to your analysis? I don't know if they turned a blind eye. I think it was a decision. I think it was a willful decision. A willful decision to go support an insurgency that had Salafists, Al-Qaeda, well, and the Muslim Brotherhood. a willful Brotherhood. decision to do what they're doing. The multinational corporations that brag at the Davos Forum that they've hijacked Europe and the United States and many other Western countries are a multinational outside force, basically taking over our nations and colonizing us with their world government system. So they need to have an outside threat to fool nationalists to give up their sovereignty to globalism in the name of protecting nationalism. That's why when the UK pulls out of the unelected dictatorial EU, mainstream media claims the Russians are behind it. That's why when Donald Trump and myself and others call for restoring our borders and doing better trade deals and not ceding our authority to the TPP, they claim we're Russian agents. Because Russia itself is pulling out of the New World Order. The UK is doing it, and so are we. So if you're a foreign group taking a country over, what do you do? You start pointing fingers at the patriots internally who are trying to save the country and claim they're foreign Ruski agents. By midsummer, we had seen WikiLeaks, DC Leaks, and other organizations dump hundreds of thousands of pages of hacked emails on the web showing the organized crime operation going on between the Democrats, the mainstream media, and the foreign banks that literally own and control them. So to divert the public from the crimes they'd committed, they doubled down and said, see, the Russians are involved in taking over our elections and manipulating things, but they showed no evidence. By late August, Hillary Clinton was 10 to 15 points in national polls behind Donald Trump. They were panicking. I began to see rumblings from the UN and the EU that they were going to send 10 times the number of observers they normally would to oversee our elections. That's why I went on air and said, we need to look at the attempt by Hillary to steal this election. She stole the nomination from Bernie Sanders, the sky's the limit. Obama came out two weeks later and basically said I was crazy, election fraud didn't exist. Then, two weeks after that, they announced that they were going to federalize the elections to keep them safe from right-wingers and the Russians. Then, on September 1st, Democratic Party nominee goes on national television and says that if we think Russia has launched any type of cyber attack on the U.S., that we'll launch a cyber attack on them and maybe even use physical military force. You've seen reports. Russia's hacked into a lot of things. China's hacked into a lot of things. Russia even hacked into the Democratic National Committee. Maybe even some state election systems. So we've got to step up our game, make sure we are well defended and able to take the fight to those who go after us. As president, I will make it clear that the United States will treat cyber attacks just like any other attack. We will be ready with serious political, economic and military responses. On cue. For the next month, the leading story every night is that Russia is taking over the elections, that Russia has spies everywhere, and that Donald Trump works for them. Then, on October 7th, the director of national intelligence, getting his information from the CIA, comes out and says, we know it's the Russians, they have cyber attacked us officially, but gave no evidence. Then a week later, Vice President Joe Biden, in mafioso style, goes on Meet the Press and tells Russia, we're going to send you a message with a massive cyber attack. We've got incredible capabilities. We're going to show you. Why haven't we sent a message yet to Putin? We're sending a message. We have the capacity to do it. And uh, 
The message he'll know sent, it. He'll know it. And it'll be at the time of our choosing and under the circumstances that have the greatest impact. Uh, the capacity to do, to fundamentally all the election is, is, is not what people think. And uh, I tell you what, to the extent that they do, we will be proportional in what we do. And, uh, and uh, at the, So a message is going to be sent? Will the public know it? I hope not. And this is where the critical bureaucratic declaration of war outside of Congress's authority comes in. Because we have the director of national intelligence. We have the intelligence agency heads. We have Mrs. Clinton. We have Joe Biden. We have Obama meeting with top generals just two days ago talking about war with Russia in preparation and saying their new doctrine is... If you cyber attack us, we will cyber attack you and or both hit you with a military response in Hillary Clinton's own words. And guess what? That's the new NATO doctrine they announced a month ago, that they may hit Russia first, or if any cyber attacks, any hacking of any type, come from the massive country of Russia, that they will take that as an act of war from any angle you look at. We are now officially at war with Russia, and this is surpassing anything that ever happened in the Cold War, according to even mainline analysts. And we have proxy wars on the border of Russia in Ukraine and in Russia's backyard in Syria. And we have top generals in Congress, like the chairman of the Joint Chiefs, Dumford, saying, look, you're asking me to put up a no-fly zone and shoot down Russian aircraft. They're going to attack us back. That is an act of war. Uh, right now, Senator, for us to control all of the airspace in Syria would require us to go to war against Syria and Russia. In summation, why is all of this happening? Well, about a week ago, General Milley, the head of the army, explained why. If you try to have the Brexit, or if Russia tries to pull out of the New World Order, or if patriots worldwide support the collapse of the EU because it's unelected, our military, working for the globalist, will hit you harder than you've ever been hit before. That's the message. And Russia is being scapegoated for the unraveling of the new world order and world government. The United States military, despite all our challenges, despite our op-tempo, despite everything we've been doing, will stop you and we will beat you harder than you've ever been beaten before. Make no mistake about that. Other countries, Russia, China, Iran, and North Korea went to school on us. They closely watched how we fought in 91 and 03. They studied our doctrine, our tactics, our equipment, our organization, our training, and our leadership. And in turn, they revised their own doctrines, and they are rapidly modernizing the military today to avoid our strengths in hopes of defeating us at some point in the future. First, not surprisingly, is that will be highly lethal, very highly lethal, unlike anything our army has experienced, at least since World War II. The world is in global turmoil. Major banks are going under on a routine basis. The biggest bank in Germany, Deutsche Bank, is teetering on the edge of collapse and will make Lehman Brothers look tame in comparison. And historically, when major collapses begin to happen, Countries and empires tend to start wars as a political distraction so they can blame the international financial crises on the war itself and not on their own failed policies. And of course, they want to influence the election here. Every globalist publication from the Washington Post to the Financial Times of London to The Economist admits that with Brexit pulling out of the euro and with Russia pulling out of globalism, what's happening here with nationalism and Trump, they're on their last legs and they've got to prop Hillary up. She is their Stalingrad. She is their Waterloo. If she falls there, they believe in their own words, their whole system will completely unravel. Well, I got news for them. It's already unraveling. But they believe that if they can trick Russia into a physical war or cyber attack Russia and get Russia to respond back, they can then pull false flags during the election and use that as an excuse to blame Russia for any election problems. Then Homeland Security has to come in to federalize it further to protect the vote. The good news is, across the political spectrum, the intelligentsia is really waking up to the fact that we have a very dangerous criminal group in control of our country that wants to stay in control and who might even start a nuclear war to do so. 
And that's why the head of the Green Party and others have come out and said that Hillary Clinton is much more dangerous than Donald Trump because she says that she wants a war with Russia, she wants a war with Iran and others. Under Hillary Clinton, we could slide into nuclear war very quickly from her declared policy in Syria. So I won't sleep well at night if Donald Trump is elected, but I sure won't sleep well at night if Hillary Clinton is elected. The ball is now in your court. History is repeating itself in a very, very dangerous fashion. The criminal elements that have hijacked our country are trying to start physical wars with Russia and others. They're opening our borders up, bringing in jihadis here to destabilize things as well. They're taking over our election processes to, quote, protect it from the Russians, even as they announce they're going to launch a massive cyber attack against Russia in retaliation for something they can't even prove Russia did. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a critical time, probably one of the most critical times in all of human history and development. It's now time to hit a knee and start asking God to basically open more people's eyes up and that we would have peace on this planet and not thermal nuclear war. The people are ready to be awakened. Please take this special report, email it to members of Congress, to local talk show hosts, and to mainstream media, and say it's time to wake up and Turn this country and the world around from the brink of Armageddon. Now, let's just illustrate this real quick. Go to my screen right here. World War III Russia. You hit all. Not one mainstream media news source talking about it here in the United States. All over the world, they're talking about it, but not here. Now, let's go to, same thing, World War III Russia hit news. Even less results. Nobody talking about it in the United States. It's a complete blackout. The only place you're getting this type of analysis and news is from alternative media and Infowars.com. And we're the leader in alternative media. I can tell you that right now. You're not going to hear and you're not going to hear this on, on fake alternative media like the Young Turks. No. Nobody's talking about this. So you need to wake up and spread the word about what's going on. Okay? We'll be back. One more segment of the fourth hour. I'm your host, Rob Dew. Infowars.com forward slash show is the website where you can go to watch this in video. For, it's a free stream. Spread it. Spread it out now before it's too late, before they take away your internet. Rob Dew reporting for Infowars.com, coming to you live from the Central Texas Command Center, deep behind enemy lines. This is our final segment here with you today. It's been an amazing show. We had Roger Stone on earlier. And uh, yesterday he put out a tweet at 831. John Kerry has threatened the Ecuadorian president with grave consequences for Ecuador if Assange is not silenced. And so what happened? Well, his internet got cut off. And nobody knew who it was. They said a state had cut it off. Now WikiLeaks, 25, 26 minutes ago now, we can confirm Ecuador cut off Assange's internet access Saturday at 5 p.m. Greenwich Mean Time, shortly after the publication of Clinton's Goldman Sachs speeches. So you got John Kerry running around like a hatchet man trying to keep people shut up and silenced because they don't want the word getting out. And this just completely illustrates the fact that we are on top of this story better than anyone else right here. You know, sometimes Roger Stone says stuff, and I can't even believe it. But here he is the day before, and then WikiLeaks comes out and says it was Ecuador. And now on the show today, Roger Stone said it looks like Hillary's going to drop out next week. So we'll see if that happens. But totally, totally incredible. Um, and this just brings me up to uh, this Wednesday. We're going to be going 11 straight hours, 13 straight hours. I'm sorry. October 19th, starting at 11 a.m., we're going to go to midnight. And that's the day of the final debate, the final debate between Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump. Let's bring up the graphic, please. There it is. Live feed analysis, 13 hours of coverage, starts at 11 a.m. You can find the free stream at Infowars.com forward slash show, or you can go to our YouTube channel, or you can download our free app and watch it on your smartphone wherever you're at, Infowars.com forward slash app, Infowars.com forward slash show for the free stream, or check out our YouTube channel, which is approaching 1 billion views, and you know that pisses off the globalists. Let's look at these two emails. Here's one to John Podesta. Says, I mean, they will go, they will go after the deleting of private emails, but at some point they will just run out of steam, especially as they see minimal electoral consequence. So they want you not to worry about these emails, and they think, oh, they'll they'll bitch about it for a little bit, but then after a while, they'll just give up and forget about it, 
And uh, you know what? People aren't forgetting about it. In fact, we had an article last week from Paul Joseph Watson. Google Trends shows Internet users far more interested in WikiLeaks than Trump allegations. That was October 14th. And you can see the blue line here represents WikiLeaks. Okay, here's Trump's allegations way, way down below. The only people that care about this are Democratic operatives who are passing it back and forth on their Facebook. Look at the interest in WikiLeaks. So much interest, John Kerry had to go threaten the Ecuadorian embassy. And so they cut off his internet. And nobody knew who it was until WikiLeaks just came out with it. Roger Stone said it the day before, then WikiLeaks came out and said, what's well, confirmed? Equ the Ecuador cut off our internet access. Now, here's an email to Cheryl Mills, Huma, and John Podesta. It says, to be clear, there are and will likely remain only two parties who can release the full 55K. So now they're saying there's 55,000 emails, the state and us. Nobody else will have them. Gowdy will only end up with what's relevant to his committee, which won't grow that much beyond what he has. Probably not get anywhere close to 500. So I don't know if this shows Republicans colluding with the Democrats on just cherry-picking certain issues which I don't think it shows that, but it shows that there's 55,000 emails, not just 33,000. There it is right there in the email, 55K. 55,000 emails they decided they had to hide from you. It's not all yoga poses, people. It's not lobster bisque recipes. It's how they're trying to screw you. That's what it's all about. So thank you for joining us today on The Alex Jones Show. I've been your host, Rob Dew, for the fourth hour. Tonight, we have the InfoWars Nightly News starting at 7 p.m. Central. You can find all that and more at InfoWars.com and InfoWars.com forward slash show for the free streams. Thanks for watching. Look, I'm not going to sit here and say, see, I told you so, that communist Chinese style net censorship was coming to the web because it's already here. It's being announced. The way you keep the internet open and free is you get involved more than ever. Go to InfoWars.com forward slash app. A new battleship in the fight. InfoWars Live, available right now. We're looking for a crew to man it. You gonna sit down and play games and be a trendy? Or are you gonna be part of history? Don't sit by and let the internet and free speech be stolen from you. Take action.